Kostakazi's World presents The Light Spectrum Electromagnetic Radiation. Howdy everyone, this is Mr. Kazi and we're here again for another round of chemistry. And today we're going to talk about the light spectrum. Last time we were together we talked about light as a wave. And today we're going to talk about the properties that light has because of the wave. So sit back, get a pencil, take some notes. Let's get started. What is electromagnetic radiation or what is the electromagnetic radiation spectrum? It is the range of electromagnetic radiation wavelengths or frequency. Here's the band or the width of it. And electromagnetic spectrum goes all the way from gamma rays to AM and FM radio waves. It's all, all of these things in between. Some people ask me, well, where's microwaves? Well, microwaves are right there in the radar range. And you'll notice we have TV, FM, infrared rays, uh, ultraviolet rays, X-rays, and gamma rays. And if you see that real little sp space in between there, between ultraviolet rays and infrared rays, well, that happens to be uh, visible light. Now, notice that with increasing wavelength, we have decreasing frequency. Increasing wavelength, decreasing frequency. Remember, they are inversely proportional. Also then, that means decreasing wavelength, getting shorter, means increasing frequency. That also means increasing energy. What we want to start uh, putting together here now, as those wavelengths get shorter, your frequency is going to get higher and your energy is going to get higher because frequency and energy are directly proportional. Now visible light is a very small portion of the electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic radiation, but it's a very important part and we need to take note of that and it's the part that really was worked with first because it's the easiest to detect. We can detect visible light with the naked eye. We can take and refract it and get the pretty rainbows. So refraction. What is refraction? Well refraction is just the bending of light waves. If you notice here we can take a prism and we can shoot white light through there and voila we break it into its six colors. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. And, you know, it's been said that uh, indigo was a color, and we believe that that was probably just Sir Isaac Newton trying to come up with seven colors because seven was the number of God, and Newton was a very religious man, and he struggled to come up with seven colors so he could have uh, the number of God in the rainbow. But really, when you look at it, analyze it, I can remember as a kid always trying to find indigo and not being able to find it. And, and being kind of disappointed by that because everybody else was just telling me, oh yeah, there's seven colors, but there are, there are only six. That brings us up to the continuous spectrum, which is a range of wavelengths with no gaps. That's what we see when we usually break uh, sunlight into its colors. That's a continuous spectrum. But that's really not what's going to be important to us. What's really important to us is a line spectrum. And a line spectrum is a range of wavelengths with gaps or missing wavelengths. A line spectrum is where you have a, an emission spectrum that is just lines. And later, this is going to be very important for us when we talk about light as a particle and the work done by Robert Bunsen and Gustav Kirchhoff. So we want to be sure that we understand a line spectrum. This is what one might look like. If I remember right, uh, this is the line spectrum of hydrogen. Now, we see these lines. There's also lines in the ultraviolet and the infrared uh, range as well. But this is the visible range of the line spectrum for elements. Notice the black areas are absorption. And the lines are emission. There's where light is emitted. We also need to understand reflection. Reflection is the bouncing of light waves uh, off an object. And just kind of like this, the light hits the object and the waves bounce back. 
And reflection is the whole reason we see things. You see because light is reflecting off of something. It's bouncing off something. Light hits the object and then comes back to your eyes or towards your eyes. And then your eyes absorb that, interpret it, send it to your brain, and you see colors and objects. But that's all because of light. If there's no light, if there's no reflected light coming back to your eyes, you cannot see. And that's kind of how some of the work is going on today in invisibility like invisibility cloaks and invisibility creams and by using nano machines and, and molecules that can reflect light uh, or refract light we can take that light and if we can take that light at the molecular level and refract it into a different direction and that light doesn't come back to your eyes then you won't see the object it will appear to you as invisible and so there's some really cool things out there, and you really should keep an eye on some things. I would suggest that you subscribe to the RSS feed for physics.org and keep up on some of the latest research. Don't rely on the news or, or magazines to help you out because they're always behind. Get on the internet, get on the RSS feed, and stay up with the latest information. Reflection and refraction is some, are some really interesting things happening. We see the color of this sweater because red is reflected and all the other colors are absorbed. Now that's also why we call red a hot color. Red is being reflected and red is very low in energy. But the colors that are being absorbed like blue, green, and violet are very high in energy. Therefore, you're absorbing the high energy and reflecting the low energy. So it's a hot color. And vice versa, blue or violet are very cool colors because the hot, high energy colors are being reflected and red and orange and yellow are being absorbed and they are low in the energy, okay? You have any questions? Check it out at www.mrkazi.com Send me an email to mrkazi at mrkazi.com Happy ions to everyone. Bye.